A lot of people wonder if you should wet tumble or dry tumble. Now in this video, I'm gonna be showing you both methods. I actually prefer both depending on my needs or how much effort I really wanna go through in cleaning my brass. At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. It's a matter of preference. However, I will be showing you both methods. Uh, we're gonna start with dry tumbling first because it's probably a bit cheaper to get into. I think around $70 you can get a kit from Frank Frankfurt Arsenal. Uh, wet tumbling is a bit more. It's going to cost you around $100, $150 for the tumbler alone, plus any media you need, uh, as well as some other cheaper things like dish soap and etc. But again, I'm going to show you dry tumbling. And the reason I use it is typically I will dry tumble my brass before I resize um, and then finish off with a wet tumble later. And the reason I do that is to get all of the carbon and just most of the grime off of the brass so you don't damage your dyes. Um, I only have 25 pieces for each, so unfortunately I'm about to kind of pile in all this other really goopy stuff from when I spray used spray lube and left it. Um, because I will say that too, with each tumbler, it doesn't matter which one, you're going to want to do at least probably 100 pieces of brass, um, if not more. I think these have more capacity than my particular uh, wet tumbler. But anyway, all you're going to do is just get it all set up, unbox it, everything like that. Assuming you've done that, then you just take off this top here like so. And then you just have basically an empty bowl and all this does is vibrate around and tumble your brass. Really simple. You can buy fancy uh, wax if you want for your dry tumbler. I just use new finish. It works really well. It's about nine or 10 bucks, I can't remember. It actually might be more than that. It's a little more expensive than I thought, but it's still cheaper than the uh, commercial stuff. So you definitely want to put any sort of wax in there. You can even just use some car wax you have laying around. I bought this, so I don't have to use my good wax. Um, but you're gonna want that, and you're also gonna want your uh, dry media. And some have, I'm sorry if I can't get all of this in frame, but some have corn cob, and some have a mix of walnut as well. That one's just the corn cob, and that's what came with my kit. I've had this for a couple years. Granted, I don't shoot a whole lot, and this uh, corn cob has lasted me the whole time. So it does last a little while. When it starts to get clumpy, that's when you know to change it. But again, I don't hit the range that often, so a couple years kind of gives you an idea this stuff can last a long time. It's really cheap, too. So all you're going to want to do to use this is just fill up your media three quarter way near to the top of the tumbler so I'll go ahead and pour that in and I keep mine all right I keep mine in a little bucket I got at Home Depot for like five or six bucks or whatever and let me switch to this view so you can see about how that looks like let me make sure yeah that's showing for you so that's about how how high you'll want that again about three quarter of the way or so doesn't have to be exact this isn't anything precise so this is where our um our wax comes in looks like i got a Ooh, okay fun stuff you can measure it out if you like or you can just pour some in here um, in this case i don't really need to activate it i'm just going to show you and I'm going to do it anyway, but I use a couple tables or teaspoons, yeah, teaspoons of it. I'm actually going to go a little bit less. I'm just going to go about halfway. Then all you do is just jump, dump this in here. Oh, it's going to get everywhere. It's going to be fun. I have car walks everywhere. I have a shiny desk. But all you do is dump it in there like so. Get that back on there so I don't spill it, knowing me. Um, all you do is dump it in there like so, and then what we'll do is let this tumble around for about, uh, with no brass inside of it, for about three to four minutes. If you dump your brass in here while you're mixing this up uh, or activating the media, uh, it could kind of get really clumpy and not clean your brass very well. So all we do is just put on our lid. Like I said, I'm assuming you have all this all put together. You have to thread this in and everything. And just tighten it down like so. Just like that. So what, I won't turn it on just yet, but what we'll do is let this run for about three or four minutes, and then I'll be right back. And this is probably gonna be really noisy. So see you in a few minutes. All right, so it's been about five or six minutes. If you see a little bit of clumping in your media for where the wax is kind of gathered together, 
that can be okay. It's not ideal, but you you still may see it sometimes. Uh, there are a couple of little tiny clumps here, but they'll break apart pretty easy when you put your brass in there. You just want to get most of it, uh, again, without pouring it in there directly um, and then going it from there. But that's pretty much the setup. So all we have to do is take all of our brass and just dump it in here. And another thing to note as well is you may want to do this outside or in a garage. At first, when it's brand new, it'll be okay. It is kind of messy still. But you'll have a lot of lead contaminants in here. So when you go to separate the media from the brass, it's not fun to breathe in. So uh, just a word of warning there. Or you could put on like N95 or respirator or something. All up to you. No judgments how you do it. And I'm just putting in some more pretty much clean but really sticky brass uh, that I used last time when I was full length sizing. Um, just so again, I can fill up a little bit more volume. So it's not only 25 pieces of brass because that really won't demonstrate it too well. But then all you do next is just put your lid back on and tighten it down pretty good. And you may want to tighten down this nut pretty well on there because after anywhere from an hour to two hours or maybe even three hours, it can come loose. So I just like to cinch it on there pretty good where it's stuck on there really well. But that's all there is to it. And you'll, we'll turn it on and let it tumble. Uh, for this demonstration, for each method, I'm probably only going to do 30 minutes. I may do up to an hour. So you're not going to see the best possible shine with either of these. Another thing I didn't mention earlier is if you didn't buy the kit, you're going to want a media separator or some sort of way to separate the brass from the corn cob media. So anyway, I'm going to turn this on, let it run for about 30 minutes to an hour or so, and then show you wet tumbling. So we will be right back. All right, so now we're on to wet tumbling, and this is also a Frankfurter Arsenal product. It's the smaller version of the wet tumbler that they have. This one, run, this one runs for about 90 bucks. This one also only does up to about 300 pieces of brass, and from what I've discovered as well, that, that's about right. The other, the bigger one does about 1,000 pieces of brass. All it really has is just a, a bucket and a motorized rotating base here, and that's all there really is to it. The other thing you're want, going to want to pick up is some, um, try not to spill these everywhere, which by the way, when you do have these, they will, oh, there we go, spill everywhere. But you're going to want to pick up some stainless steel pens or stainless steel media of some sort. This is, um, as you can see, this is the pen pins version. This is just like extruded metal. Uh, I think it's Southern Shine Media makes little niblets or something. I don't know what you want to call them, but they make kind of a rounded type of stainless steel media. And if I were you, I would just go ahead and pick up that instead. Um, I think they're on Facebook or something. Um, and that's all where I could find them at least, but they, um, they tend to work better. And I found that these get stuck in my necks, especially for a 6.5 or a type case, like especially the Creedmoor. Um, they'll get stuck in the neck, they'll get stuck in the body. And it's a real pain to have to individually pick each, each of these brasses out or these pins outside of your neck. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Anyway, so I would just go ahead and pick up the, the niblets or that's what I'll call them. Uh, the other thing you have is like a clear window with a O-ring and then just the bucket itself. This one isn't really fancy. The bigger one has a rubberized internal, which is really nice and helps with noise dampening. So if that's important to you, you may want to upgrade to that one. I think that one's about 150 bucks. You could also just pick up a rock tumbler too, by the way. I'm not sure how long that'll last. So again, we're going to be dealing with water and I'll pour that in in just a second. But one thing I want to mention you want to have on hand is some dish detergent, uh, lemon shine, and maybe some like rinse aid or something if you don't uh, care if you don't want water spots on your brass or if you're entering them into a beauty contest so uh, <laughs> the benefits to wet tumbling versus dry tumbling is that these pins do a really good job of getting all the carbon out of your um, your primer pockets your uh, around the case neck especially it gets the inside of it really good too the downside is it's a real pain to wet tumble honestly versus dry tumble dry tumble is real easy real quick this is a little bit more of a process, so just keep that in mind. So if you do dry tumble only, you may eventually have to, if you care to, scrub your necks, scrub the carbon off your necks with a uh, scotch, uh, Brillo pad or scotch pad or something like that, because there will be heavy carbon after a while. And with wet tumbling, you just don't get that. So there's pluses and minuses to, to each, but 
anyway, the first thing we'll do is pour in some water. And I'll show you what level, make sure this is, okay, good, uh, what level it should be at. We're going to pour the water to about right here. So when this is sitting, this clear piece is sitting on top, on the inside, we don't want to see any sort of, um, any sort of line. We basically, when we push this in, it'll, it'll sit, the water will meet right with it perfectly, ideally. And that way we're not leaving any sort of gap. If you happen, when you happen to tilt this and if you see a, a level, if you see a water line, that means you're going to want to add a lot more water. So just keep that in mind. So I guess what I'll do before I forget is go ahead and pour in the brass. I haven't done that before. <laughs> so this is going to be real loud. I'm sorry. This is again, the same 25 pieces of brass that we're using on the dry tumbler. That's another downside to this one. You may not have eardrums by the end of the day. <laughs> Probably just gonna toss in all of this to be honest. Ah, ow. Honestly, if I wanted to lose my hearing, I'd, I'd go to a rock concert. <laughs> so, anyway, now that we got our brass in there, we'll go ahead and pour some water to make sure it's level. So again, get your brass in there first because if you put brass in after, you're gonna have a, a nice mess. So. Since my office doesn't have water on tap, I'm going to go ahead and pour this to that top here. Or maybe slightly less since we have to also add our pins. Almost forgot that too. I'm just going to leave it right about there. So to give you an idea, even though we're not done yet, that's a, a close to where we'll want it. But again, I'm going to add the pins, which will settle this in a bit more. Ooh, that's eh, not all of them. They're, they're wet still. Um, so that's pretty much dead on. That's close. It might even need a bit more water. Uh, I totally don't didn't have to redo this, so this there may not <laughs> may or may not be some of this in here, uh, some of this dish detergent. But um, anyway, as far as a dish detergent, we're just gonna pour about that much in. I don't count. I don't do anything technical. And then for the um, lemon shine, you may want to add this in within the last 30 minutes of your tumble. Meaning, say if you've been tumbling this for about an hour or two or however long you want to do it, add this in for about the last 30 minutes. And since I'm only probably going to go 30 minutes to an hour anyway, it's okay. But the reason I'm mentioning that, that is because this will tarnish your brass if it's left in for too, too long. I personally haven't experienced it too much, but I have seen cases online of it happening. So um, just, just be wary of that. And as far as the amount, if you have a nine millimeter case line around, which probably most of us do, and if you don't, maybe go when you're at the range or something, pick one up off the floor, but uh, just get about a nine millimeter case and we're gonna fill up the Lemmy Shine to the top of that case. And that's pretty much the perfect amount. And that could be applied to probably to the bigger tumbler as well. It doesn't take much of this stuff. And of course, ideally, you do all this over a sink or something, but uh, I don't have film equipment where a sink is. And this is probably also where you'd add your um, your rinse aid if you wanted to. Again, that just keeps the water spots off. I'm going to skip it for now because I actually haven't experimented with that. Let's see where this sits at. I'm going to personally say that's probably good enough. Um, let's see. I don't know if you could see, but it's just barely touching. I mean, it could probably even go a bit more water, but... Since I'm not on a tap, I don't have too much control. Um, but that's it. You just put this clear top on here. And then we want to make sure we get this pretty tight. And if you tighten this down and you see leaks, just, just give it a good good twisting and then you know resume. You obviously don't want this thing leaking while you're gone. And then the next thing we do is just set this on top of here. Like so. And then this, you won't be able to see it, but it has a switch underneath here. Um, the bigger one has a timer. But all we do is just turn this on. And I'm also going to let this go for 30 minutes. And then we'll compare our results with this versus the dry tumbler. So, dry tumbler. so I will also be right back. All right, so both of the tumblers are done tumbling for about 30 minutes or so. The first one I'm going to start with is the dry tumbler again. And this is going to be 
separating the media from the brass itself. Now, again, this is really, really easy. If you bought the Frankfurt Arsenal kit, it comes with this bucket with these little notches in it, which is really cool, as well as this media sifter. And you just pretty much slide it into the bucket like so. And then there's this little pin that you have to take out that holds this uh, open or holds it closed and lets you open it. Then we're just going to swing it open about like that. I don't have much room to work with. So um, the next thing we'll do is just dump our uh, media and brass in here all together and then give it a whirl and that'll pretty much be it. So again, just pour it, just simply pour it in. Now, due to static, a lot of your uh, media will probably end up staying in the bowl, which is, it's okay. So, all this does is separate the media. You can see the brass in here with the media. Put the pin in. I apologize, it's probably going to be really loud. Um, if you want to, you can put on these little side wing things uh, that prevent the media from splashing or getting outside the bucket. Oops, trying not to hit the mic. There we go. So, again, it's probably be really loud. Okay, so the for the sake of both of our eardrums, I will uh, I will just call that good. But you get you kind of get the idea. And you just pull, just open this up, and then and there you go. Like all your, if you give it several more whirls, all your brass and media will be separated. As I see, I'm probably not, I don't have it all, but give it a few more turns and you're good to go. But that's all there is to it. So the next one I'll show you is the wet tumbling process, which is a little bit more of work to get that one done. So um, yeah, I will move on to that. So now we're going to empty out our water for the wet tumbler. And one thing I want to mention you might want to grab is or buy is some sort of mesh. This is a, uh, a pan sifter, like for panning for gold, I guess, or I don't know. Uh, anyway, I found it on Amazon for like 10 bucks, 10, 15 bucks. You can grab that or Frankfurt Arsenal also makes ones that fit right over and use the, um, use the handle and it screws right onto the lid itself, which is pretty cool for about nine bucks or so. That may be a little more convenient. They didn't have those out when I had bought this at the time, so I, I went with this. Just make sure you have a pretty fine mesh so the stainless steel pins don't fall through. Another method is you can use the, um, if you do have a dry tumbler as well, or the media sifter, you can apparently use that, um, and I've had okay success with that too, and that helps knock some of the pin out, pins out because they will get stuck inside the case. But anyway, all we do is just simply pour this over into the mesh. I'm using the same bucket that I have with the, uh, that came with the dry tumbler, but any five gallon bucket. I'm going a little slow here so I don't make a mess. Switch back to that top view. Just give this a good shake a few, several times. Reach around the mic. Set this side. Okay, and ideally you want to do this over a sink or something maybe with one of those spray nozzles was, is really good because you'll have a lot of leftover suds and that could lead to water spots on your brass. Up to you if that really matters, but I do like to rinse mine a little bit. So I'm gonna grab my bucket of water. And I'm getting a little bit of spillage, so I'll probably say that's good enough. Plus, eh, I'm about halfway. But you probably get the drift. I don't want to make a mess. But you just rinse that over several, like, many times you need. And then you may have to shake out each piece of brass, unfortunately. Unless you are using that media uh, sifter, um, the dry sifter because the pins will get stuck in there. But I am looking in there, I do see a little bit of suds. I would want to rinse this out a bit more. But um, that's all there is to it for this. The next thing I'm gonna grab real quick is a brass dryer. You can stick these in the oven. Um, if you live in a hot climate, unfortunately I do not. I'm in the PNW, so it's 
pretty much raining right now. Um, you can actually just set these outside. You could wrap them in a towel and leave it be for a few days, maybe even up to a week. But the point being, you definitely want to make sure each of these are uh, really dry before you obviously load powder in there. But uh, I'm going to grab my food dehydrator and I will load that up and show you how that is. Just I'll be right back. All right, now I got my food dehydrator on the table here. Uh, this is just a standard one I bought at um, like Bed Bath Beyond or you can find them about anywhere really. They do make, um, I'll say specialized ones they, they claim is for use for brass only, um, but they're really just rebranded fancy food dehydrators. The only one that I don't think is, is the Lyman Cyclone uh, is because it doesn't have this annoying hole in the center that the heater goes through. So if you want to spend the extra 10 or $20, I think it is for that to get that, I'd, I'd say it's worth it. Otherwise these are like 30 or 40 bucks. So they are a bit cheaper. Um, again, you're going to want to shake each of your uh, brass, each of each piece of your brass is out uh, in order to shake away those pins. Um, you could just simply take them and drop them in there, but you'll probably get a, a bunch of pins with it as well, unfortunately, and then they'll fall in there and then you have to clean it out. Pretty much either way, you're going to be dealing with pins whether you like it or not. You can use a magnetic um, media separator too uh, to help you pick up all the media, uh, the, the stainless steel pins. But I usually only use that for when I'm transferring them out of here. Um, I think, I, don't, I honestly, <laughs> I haven't done this process in a while, but this is kind of how I usually do it for small batches. Really tedious, really annoying to be honest with you, but the results are pretty good. So anyway, you're just gonna, I'm not gonna do all of them here. That'd be, you might as well watch paint dry, but um, you're just gonna load each each piece of your brass and in, in how many different trays you want. And then just take the uh, little food dehydrator cap, just turn it on. I usually let this go for a few hours at least, uh, just because I really want to be sure that it's going to be uh, dry. If you are using an oven, I think about as, about as low as you can go is ideal. So 200 degrees or less, otherwise you'll tarnish your brass. So if you are after this uh, uh, beauty pageant brass, then you don't want to have to do all this work and then just simply tarnish it later. So try to keep, if you're using an oven, 200 degrees or less. Uh, outside will be fine. This thing's just set. There's uh, there's no temperature on this one. But yeah, just let it go for a few hours. One thing I do want to mention, I uh, meant to mention earlier, is if you're handling a lot of brass, just in general when you're reloading, is pick up some of this hand soap. It's D-lead hand soap and it's really awesome. So when you get really all that, that carbon on your fingers, you can't scrub it off with soap. This stuff does a really good job. So anyway, I'm going to turn this on and then I'll show you the results of uh, both of our wet and dry tumbling brass after. So I'll see you in just a sec. So here's the final results of each method. I have the dry tumbler, uh, dry tumbled brass on the left and the wet tumbled brass on the right. Now, you're probably looking at that, especially in this particular instance and going, why would I ever deal with wet tumbling? Um, the thing you're not able to see really is the primer pockets and I won't really, I looked, they're all still pretty dir dirty and you probably wouldn't be able to see it anyway. You're getting that as well as you're getting on the inside really well too with the wet tumbler. And I also only tumbled for 30 minutes each just to give it a fair shot. Uh, if I were to let these each go for about three hours, like they should really, or really maybe an hour and a half to two hours, ideally, but maybe up to three hours, there would be a huge difference. The other thing is too, both the 223 cases were already clean. And then my uh, 6.5 Creedmoor brass was the only thing that was really dirty is the necks. And the darkened spots that you're seeing here is just leftover, um, I don't know, residue, I don't know what you call it. It's just leftover discoloration from my annealing process. So it's really not a direct, fair comparison. If you want to see a much bigger wow result, I would just, I'll, I'll pull up an image for you. Maybe if somebody's Google image search brass that I, I found or something, I'll slap that up there. But that'll get you an idea of what the, the real results would be on, on a more realistic scenario. Um, if I had to choose a method, it's definitely one of those, it depends. Like I said, I use them both. I use the dry tumbler for the quick stuff or if I just don't want to deal with wet tumbling. I also use it just to clean up my brass before I resize so I don't have to deal with all the hassle of wet tumbling and then have to basically do it twice. And then I wet tumble for my final, but it just, again, it depends what you want, how good you want your brass to look. The biggest thing, if it's, if it's clean enough, it's going to perform similarly. You don't really need super shiny cleaner, uh, cleaned primer pockets. You don't need super shiny 
beautified brass. You don't need any of that to get good results. So just keep that in mind, no matter what anybody on a forum tells you, it doesn't matter. It, it really doesn't. So the biggest thing is just have good quality brass, good quality components that will go miles uh, beyond hurrying out and, buy, and, and buying a, a new tumbler if you already have one that works for you. But um, I just wanted to give you a realistic I, like scenario here of only 30 minutes. It's a small sample size, but I wanted to be straight up and honest with the results. And that's just, that's what I have right here. So um, yeah, dry and wet tumbling, not a huge difference. Typically um, on my 223 stuff that's been fired, this is, this is not even um, swaged or anything. You'll see kind of, it won't focus, but um, that's just stuff I had sitting that's ready to be prepared eventually. So it hadn't been really, um, it already been pre-cleaned and everything when I bought it. So it's not really a good good indication either. Usually the 223 brass, 223 brass is way dirtier. Again, the Creedmoor brass is, it's a bolt action. So most of the, the grime and dirt is up near the shoulders. You can kind of see they're both, um, so dry and wet. They're both, it got clean enough because there's just not that much carbon in a bolt action. Most of it's kept forward from the action itself. So the harder stuff is is pistol and and ARs and stuff. That's that's the harder stuff to clean. Anyway, um, probably rambled on enough about that. But yeah, just pick one or pick both if you like. But that's the process. That's how I've been doing it for a while now. It's been working for me. Um, feel free to share your methods or what you prefer in the comments. Definitely let me know if you have any ideas or anything that maybe I haven't heard of at this point um, that I should try. And maybe I'll give it a go and let you know. How it, how it works out for me. But anyway, that's just wet tumbling. So the next in our series will be actually, now that we're finally done with brass prep, is starting to seat some, uh, get some primers in there, powder and all that fun stuff. So I'll see you then and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.